What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be talking about the Path of Travel tool. This is going to be an in-depth tutorial where I show you all of, the tool, all of the features of this new tool. Now before I get started, just note that this tool is only available in the latest version of Revit and that is Revit 2020. So if you don't have that uh, version, you won't have the tool. But don't worry, in the description of this video, I left links to the video where I explain how to download and install Revit 2020 on your computer absolutely free if you're a student. And also I have a tutorial there where I explain all of the new tools and features that are excited about exciting about Revit 2020. Okay, also before I get started, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make useful Revit tutorials each week, multiple tutorials each week. Also, each week I do a one hour course which can be found on my Patreon. I've got over 21 courses so far and I am uploading one each week. And also there you can find all of my Revit project files like this file that I'm going to be using for this here tutorial. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into the tutorial. So here you can see I have this uh, floor plan layout. This is just a simple layout that they uh, modeled just to have kind of an office building design. And now I'm going to be explaining the path of travel tool on this here uh, layout. So to get to the path of travel tool, you need to go to the an uh, analyze tab and it's all the way over here at the corner, it's path of travel. Now, if, if I hover over it, you're going to notice that we don't really have any shortcuts for it, but that's okay. It's not a tool that you use very often. So what you need to do is you need to just click, then you need to go to basically, you need to place the, uh, pick the uh, start or uh, pick the path of travel uh, start point. So basically you do the start point maybe from here and then you do the end point over here. And as you can see, Revit calculates how it, what is the fastest path to go from this office all the way here to the maybe elevator shaft if that's the like the escape route. So you can basically do that from each office. Uh, and I, I guess you would have to do it if you're doing a design, you have to analyze all of the paths. So you just go like this. And as you can see, Revit is, or this new uh, path travel tool is recognizing all of the doors and all of the walls. So it's basically going through the doors, around the walls, and that's how it's uh, calculating how you get to the center point. So basically you just do this, you go all the way from each office or from each area from which you want to kind of calculate the path of travel, you go just like that. And Revit is basically drawing these lines. So let me add just a few more. And then we're going to be exploring all of the information that we get out of this. And how can we manipulate it to create maybe some analysis on the path of travel, and maybe make some informed decisions if the design has to change in some way because of these, because of the information we've got from the using the path of travel tool. So let's say we have, yeah, let's say we have enough of these lines. I mean, you would have to go from each office, but for now, let's uh, let's stick to this. So we have all of these uh, lines all laid out and let's say you're not happy with the green line, maybe you don't like the green. So how do you change this? Well, if you select one of these lines, you're going to see that here we have the line styles option and we can uh, choose basically uh, between these lines. So if you're familiar with Revit, these are basically the lines that are used as kind of detail lines uh, that are here with the annotate detail line tool. So uh, with that in mind, you can select uh, one of these lines and it, it's the same options. So you can go here to the manage tab and then go to additional settings and here we have line styles. So basically this affects both the detail lines as well as the path of travel line uh, when you find it. So here it is, path of travel lines and it's got this Revit like green, the 166600 uh, RGB Revit green and I'm just going to go and change it to maybe this blue, hit apply, okay and now as you can see the path of travel lines change their color. Of course, this is not really that important. What is important is the path of travel and how it calculates it. So if you select one of these lines, you're going to notice that here in the properties under dimensions, we have uh, basically this is the speed uh, at which like humans 
can can walk so that's already set and here we have the time so it takes 25 seconds to go from this office all the way here and also here for the uh, length, it's 33.68 meters. So you would need to go into your, uh, I guess you would have to explore your country's uh, rules and regulations for the path of travel for the type of building that you're designing. And then you would basically take a look here and see if everything is working out. Now, of course, uh, this is maybe an inefficient way to go about it just by selecting each line independently. So what's a better option is to have a schedule for this. So let's create a schedule for the path of travel. So what I'm going to do now is go to view here we have our schedules and I'm going to choose the schedule quantities tool. And now let's create our schedule. So I'm going to search for the path of travel. Do we have that? Uh, let's see. Uh, if it's not over here, it's under lines. So maybe go under lines and yeah, it's path of travel. So you need to find lines, open up the expand the menu and then find path of travel. Then I'm just going to hit OK. And here you have all of these uh, all of the parameters that we had in the properties panel uh, that are associated with path of travel. So usually what's important is the uh, maybe a level and maybe a length, of course, length, and then also maybe the speed and time. So let's say these are the important uh, the important fields that you want to have. Of course, room would be really useful. Now, in this case, I didn't really add the uh, rooms to this. Uh, I didn't label them. So uh, we don't have that information. But if you did have that information, that would be really useful because then you could actually ping a pinpoint which office is maybe uh, takes a too long of a time so what works and what doesn't work but let's say we're happy with this then I'm going to go to sorting and grouping and let's go with maybe the time that that it takes and also we can add maybe grand totals something like that uh, and yeah let's say we are uh, happy with this so I'm just going to hit OK, and here we have a schedule. Now, what, what I like to do with schedules is just select it and move it here off to the side and then uh, just kind of stretch it like this, put it all the way in the corner, just like that. And now we can look, look here at the schedule and then look also over here and you can actually select stuff from the schedule. So maybe if I select this, as you can see, this is 25 seconds and it's this line over here. Now, this is cool, but it's still not best. We're, we're still kind of having to look at the information here and let's say anything over 25 seconds is too long and then we have to make some design changes, but you would have to still go here into the uh, schedule, select it and then try to find it in the model. So here, maybe this one, it's this one over here. As you can see, it highlights in a different shade of blue. Maybe this is why Revit doesn't use blue for uh, these lines because now it's hard to see which one is selected but you get a point so anyway this is kind of inefficient and let's say we want to have a better option or better uh, way of looking at the uh, these paths so what I'm going to do for that is create a filter so VG override filter or visibility graphics override filter so what is that so you ju just go to your VG either by going to properties when nothing is selected in the view so visibility graphic overrides and go here into edit or alternatively you can just type in VG and you will get the visibility graphics overrides for this floor plan so here here on the end, the latest, the last tab is filters and we can create a new filter. So what I'm going to do is just go new and now we need to search. Okay, so some elements are selected and I'm just going to uncheck those. Let's see, ramps, uncheck that, stairs, walls, okay. And okay, what we need to do is add the path of travel. So let's add that, yeah, continue and uncheck walls. Okay, so basically, I think the only one is that's selected is the path of travel, and yes, it is. Okay, so we've got our path of travel, and here we can add rules. So path of travel, here we have all of the parameters, and let's say the time is the most important parameter, and as we said here, 25 seconds, anything over 25 seconds is too long. Let's say that's the like the issue, and then what we can do over here is go is greater than, and then let's just type in 25 seconds. 
Okay, so we have that, so let's add that rule. So let's uh, open that up and the override will be for our lines and let's highlight them in red just to make sure that everybody knows that something is wrong there. It can be a regular red and for weight, let's go with eight just to emphasize the importance. Hit okay and there we go. So these lines highlight in red and that basically means that the path of travel is way too long for the rules and regulations in that country and then you can can use the or for that type of building so then you can use this information to make informative design changes now one more thing we don't really have any furniture here but let's say I want to add some furniture so let's go to architecture component let's go with the M desk and let's place it here right in the path of travel so now I can select this uh, path and go here into update and as you can see it's going to go around furniture now how Revit figures out what should it go around and what can it go through. So for example, it can go through doors, but around furniture. Well, that's determined uh, and that can be already set up by going here into your uh, analyze tab, going to path of travel and you have this little you know, 45 degree angle arrow and you can just select it and you will get all of your root analysis settings. So here it says Revit will never consider the following as obstacles. So those are these elements. And and in addition, do not consider these model categories. And here only doors are checked. I think, yeah, only doors are checked and that's why it can only go through doors. But you can check maybe something else, maybe windows or something like that. Also, there is an analysis zone. So what does that mean? So basically it means the top level and the bottom level. Now, if this doesn't make too much sense, let me just open up this image. And as you can see, it basically looks like this. So Revit, allows you to set this zone from one to two and anything that's in this zone is in the path of travel. Anything that's below is not and anything that's above is not. So basically what Revit is saying is that anything that's lower than 0.2 meters or 20 centimeters is something that you can kind of walk over so that's not considered an obstacle and anything that's uh, higher than two meters is something that you can kind of walk underneath and also that one be uh, won't be considered an obstacle so that's why it's not really considering those uh, uh, any elements that are in that zone obstacles so let me just hit OK you can change this if you want if you want to add something so feel free to do it and I'm just going to hit OK here and there we go so that's how the path of travel works in Revit that's how you can use it that's how you can uh, use it to the maximum advantage for your project and how can you pull the most information out of your project Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, this quick tutorial on the Path of Travel tool. Thank you for watching. If you want some more advanced uh, Revit courses, uh, my one-hour Revit courses can be found on my Patreon. First link in the description. Also there you can find this project file as well as all of my other Revit project files, over 300 files so far. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for any future tutorials, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.